We want to go to some more breaking news, this time out of Washington, D.C. We're just getting this, a live picture near the White House where a U-Haul truck has crashed into a barrier nearby. Several blocks of H Street around Lafayette Square are shut down while police investigate. It is unknown if any arrests have been made or if there are any injuries. Right now it appears we're taking a look at the U-Haul truck itself. And you can see that area cordoned off, of course, as they uh, inspect perhaps what's in it and what it's doing there in the first place. Also tonight, a new twist in the killing of four college students in Idaho. Today, the suspect who was arrested in the Poconos appeared in court for the first time in months. But when he was asked to enter a plea, Brian Koberger remained silent. NBC 10's Johnny Archer is here to explain exactly what happened. Hey, Johnny. Yeah, Keith and Jackie, the judge in this case, then entered a not guilty plea for the defendant. And I spoke to a criminal defense attorney about this strategy the defense used today, and he tells me it's actually a more commonly used practice in court than you might think. Monday, Brian Koberger stood silent in an Idaho courtroom during his arraignment hearing, accused of stabbing to death four University of Idaho students. The judge entering not guilty pleas on all murder charges. NBC 10 legal analyst Enrique L1 Latoisen, as a criminal defense attorney not associated with the case, he explained why the defense might use this strategy of standing silent. What you're doing is you're keeping your options open. You're formally not telling the court what you're going to do. And what happens is the court just says, you know, effectively, we're just going to make it a not guilty plea for you. And what that does is that allows the person to still remain silent and still to keep their options open. During the 15 minute hearing, the judge read aloud the charges four counts of first-degree murder and burglary. The prosecution now has 60 days to give notice if they'll seek the death penalty. Family members of some of the victims were in court Monday for the hearing. One of the victims is Maddie Mogan, who would have turned 22 this week. I want people to remember Maddie as just being a lo loving, caring, just beautiful person who everybody just misses so much. Maddie and three other students were killed inside an off-campus house last November. Police arresting Koberger more than a month later at his parents' Pocono, Pennsylvania home. The 28-year-old was a doctoral student of criminology at nearby Washington State University. Prosecutors have not set a motive behind the killings, but presented enough evidence last week to have a grand jury indict Koberger, skipping a week-long preliminary hearing. It's a really good move for the prosecution, and if you're on the defense side, it really stinks that now you've lost your opportunity to cross-examine this original evidence. And Keith and Jackie, according to uh, court documents, DNA traced to Koberger was found on a nice sheath at the crime scene. And in a recent Dateline exclusive, a source with inside knowledge of the investigation says detectives had found evidence that several months before the murders, Koberger went on Amazon to buy a K-bar knife and sheath. And right now, this case is set to go trial October 2nd, but that date could change. Keith and Jack, I'll send it back to you. Johnny Archer live here in the studio. Johnny, thanks.